On the schedule here, we're in week seven already of uh, Minnesota State High School football action. So section play right around the corner. Hill Murray wraps up their uh, regular season schedule next Friday at home, or excuse me, Wednesday. It's MEA Wednesday. They will take on uh, St. Paul Como Park at seven o'clock and Richfield will travel out to Litchfield where they will take on the Dragons at seven o'clock on Wednesday. Also, there are some Thursday games, at least in the metro area. Uh, during MEA week. So, and we start sections a week from Tuesday, Tuesday, Saturday, leading up to the Friday, the uh, 2nd of uh, November. That is section final day. Some teams will also play on that Saturday the 3rd, leading into the state tournament starting the next week on uh, Friday, the 9th of November. It is not a very nice night tonight, although the rain has let up here. The wind blowing out of the east at about 15 miles per hour fairly steadily. And it's blowing straight into our booth here. So we threw up the garage door. And it'll be a cool night for football. But if the rain stays away, we've had rain all day. But right now, not getting too much. So that's good because it would be blowing right into our faces here in the booth. As both teams head on the field, Hill Murray tonight dressed in their white visiting uniforms, trimmed in green and black. And the Richfield Spartans just coming on the field. The home team tonight on the scoreboard, the Spartans dressed in their maroon with the white pants and maroon helmets. Looking at uh, the section play, Hill Murray right now tied on top of the section in 3-4-A with Chisago Lakes and Simley, who Hill Murray beat earlier in the season, 14-7. All those three teams are tied at four and two. Como and Johnson behind them at three and three and Saint, South St. Paul and North St. Paul bringing up the bottom at two and four. In 4-3A, where we see Richfield is north, he is on top of the 5-1 and one record. Richfield second at 4-2. And, two. and uh, the rest following the seven-team section. We're going to take a break right now on Fox 9 Plus, and we'll be back with the start of our ballgame right after this. We've waited for this for quite some time. Vikings football is back. Yeah! So do I. I think, you know, we have a really good thing going on here, and I'm just excited to be, you know, part of this journey with them. Denarius Smith blitzes. Goff, he'll hurl it up. Josh again, and he caught this one. Yes, he did. That I've been here to, you know, just create that culture, I think has been amazing. You know, that, that's one, uh, one of the big reasons why, you know, I wanted to be back and wanted to be a part of this for the long run. I just want to help lead the way, help lead the team. You know, I think it would be a big part of just my, who I am as a person you know, to be a cornerstone for this organization, you know, heading in the right direction. And welcome back. You can see it's a lovely night for football here at TCO Stadium. Pat Barrett, glad you're joining us tonight on Fox 9 Plus and our prep spotlight game between Richfield and Hill Murray. So both teams coming in, riding four games winning streaks and looking to try and keep that going. Last time I saw you, it was North St. Paul and Hill Murray in an absolute <laughs> crazy ball game. Hill Murray led 56-6 at halftime. And before it was all done, a stop at the goal line, a two-point conversion kept it from being a one-possession game in the last minute and 15. Hill Murray coming away with a 63-54 victory over their neighbors, the Polars. Richfield will kick off tonight. They are going to kick into this 15 mile an hour wind with the rain coming in their faces. Hill Murray will go right to left on your screen tonight. Normal deep men for Hill Murray will be number three and number six, Simon Seidel, Gavin Berg, the two seniors. Normally deep on the kickoff for Hill Murray. See if that's the setup they're going with. Yep, they're going back there to receive the kick. Kicking off for the Richfield Spartans tonight, Joaquin Jamison. 
does the kicking duties. And we are just about ready for action here at TCO. So glad you're joining us tonight. As the ball blows off the tee, we may have to have somebody hold it for Joaquin down there. We'll see as he gets ready to get this game started off. And in Paul Allen fashion, we should probably call the boom, huh? Boom, and we're underway. I see Pooch's one right down the center of the field. Take it in the middle at about the 30-yard line. Carry it across the 40. And that's where uh, Hill Murray will start with the ball. First and 10. As the kick was taken now by number 17, Xavier Daniels. He is the main running back for the Pioneers. And they're going to start with good field position. Wind at their back in this first quarter. Looks like they'll mark it at the 42-yard line. That's where the visitors will get started tonight. Jackson Reeves, their junior quarterback, under center. Running backs in I formation. They shift the tight end to the right. They'll hand off to Daniels. He cuts it off the right side. Going to be hit by a couple of Spartans. He'll get her across the 45-yard line. Looks like a gain of about four on the play. In the replay, good lead block for him. First man who met him was number seven, Spencer Lewis. Brought down, but not before he gets a good gain to start out. So there's second down and six at their own 46 yard line, just underway from TCO. Glad you're joining us, hopefully on a couch with a hot chocolate somewhere in front of a fireplace. We could use the fireplace and the hot chocolate up here tonight as we just open up the garage door and the wind blowing in our face as they shift the tight end again in motion to the right. That's Jack Derange. Reeves will hand off to Daniels up the middle. Bounces off one. Gets out near midfield. He'll be tackled at the 49-yard line. Get a replay of it coming off the left side. Good hole right away. Bounced right off. Knocked him into the ground. Give a gain of about three on the play. So third down and three coming up. As we tick down to 1040 here in the first quarter, no score, just underway from TCO. Shotgun formation. Daniels to the left of Reeves. First third down play of the night. Reeves will fling it out to the side and that ball's dropped over there. Intended for Gavin Berg, hit him right in the numbers, but slipped out of his hands. It'll bring up fourth down. And we'll see what Coach Reeves decides to do over there. Looks like Jackson Reeves is staying on the field. Looks over, gets the call, and he'll come into the huddle. Doesn't mean he couldn't pooch kick. We had YZ last week, and they were pooch kicking with their quarterback a number of times. So we'll see what happens. He's under center, and it doesn't look like pooch kick position to me. So fourth down and three. Big play right here at 49-yard line of Hill Murray. They're stopped, will give Richby a good field position to start their first possession. Hand off up the middle to Daniels. Cuts outside, he's gonna get the first down and more. Rambles inside the 35 and brought down near the 30. Big run for the Pioneers, first down on the play. Brought down by number four, Dre Collins, number nine, Musa Santa, but not before a huge gain on the play. We'll give him 21 yards and that's a first down for Hill Murray. The game we had earlier in the season against North St. Paul, Daniels ran wild in the first half as they racked up 56 points. Looks like we've got a Hill Murray player down on the field with an injury. Trainers out looking at him as you're looking over at the sign line of the Hill Murray Pioneers. Do some chatting here. 10-19 left in this first quarter of play. First first down of the game as they take off number 77, Carson Jewett, helping him off the field. So we'll stay here with the action as they take him off. Looks like knee or ankle as they help him off the field. Big lineman presence for the Pioneers, the senior, 6'2", 275. So big man to replace. He'll step off, and we're back up first down and 10 coming for Hill Murray. First drive of the ball game. They had a big run by Daniels to give him the first down on that fourth down play. So we start action again. 30-yard line of Richfield. Reeves will give it to Daniels right up the middle. Big hole as they open up the left side. He'll cross the 20, almost down to the 15-yard line. And another first down for the Pioneers. 
Good run on the play by Daniels, but he had a huge hole off that left side. You'll see the opening right there, and he made the most of it, hauling a bunch of Spartans down. Near the 15-yard line market at the 17, first down and 10. Daniels again, cuts off the left, bounces off a couple. He'll head to the outside, knocked out of bounds at about the eight yard line. Another good first down gain. Tackle on the play by number four, Dre Collins, but not before a big gain on first down. We'll bring up second down and short. You can see he bounced off again. He is manhandling the people trying to take him down so far here early first quarter play, and that's what he did against North St. Paul. Reeves back in the huddle on second and short. Ball marked at the eight yard line. Good drive here for the Pioneers as they capitalize on the fourth down gained by Daniels. And they're threatening to score the first touchdown of the ball game as both tight ends shift. Petrzewski and Durain shift right. Handoff off the middle, this is Alex Gross back up, running back, he's near the goal and he'll score. Alex Gross, eight yard run. And the Pioneers are on the board, 6-0. Two minutes and 14 seconds gone. And Gross's eight yard run gives the Pioneers the lead. You can see he dragged the defenders into the end zone. Dane Paul on to attempt the extra point. Gavin Berg is the holder. Paul, the left-footed kicker. We'll see if he can tack on the extra point. Snap is good. Holds down, kick is up, and it's good. With 9.46 to go in the first quarter, the score. Hill Murray seven, Richfield nothing. Back after this on Fox 9 Plus. City's Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. You can see the Richfield sideline down there. Defense couldn't put up much of a stop on that. Big drive by Hill Murray as they picked up the fourth down near midfield and marched it down into the end zone. Alex Gross completing it with an eight-yard run up the middle. Dane Paul's kick was good, and the Pioneers on top, 7-0. Paul back to kick again for the Pioneers. He will kick off. Dre Collins back deep. For the Spartans as they look forward to their first drive of the ball game. Good wind at Paul's back on this kick and he was booming him into the end zone before the game and he booms that one into the end zone. So the Spartans will come out, start first and 10. Quarterback for the Spartans will be Jackson Dosh Daniels, Samuels rather, six foot four senior quarterback. And it looks like Carson Jewett's back in the lineup. Got hauled off the field, but he is back on Big defensive and offensive line presence for the Pioneers, so that's good news for them. As Richfield looks to start first and 10, Dosh Samuels back in shotgun formation. Hands off off the right side, not much happening there. Seidel in, or Malcolm Peterson, main running back for Richfield, stopped on the play going off the right side. You can see there, Plenty of penetration in that backfield. Number 80, Luke Grigson in on the tackle. We'll be talking to Luke's dad, Ryan Grigson, senior vice president of player personnel for the Vikings at halftime. That's coming up. Again, handoff to Peterson. Again, nothing happening there. Again, good penetration. Again, Grigson in on the tackle. Had help from Petrzewski. So third and long coming up. 
for the Spartans. They've got five wide receivers all with good numbers on the season. So they'll put it up, but they are throwing into a stiff 15 mile an hour wind as they're third and long. Dosh Samuels, screen pass, hits Peterson. And there's Carson Jewett, first man in on the tackle. It'll bring up fourth down for the Spartans. Gain of about four on the play, but Jewett got to him quickly and he looks no worse to wear. They hauled him off a couple of minutes ago, but he looks fine right now, read it perfectly. As he saw the screen and was right on top of Peterson, hauled him down to the ground. Back to punt quarterback, Dosh Samuels for Richfield on fourth and eight from their own 22 yard line. Ticket down towards eight minutes left here in the first quarter. Looks like they're short a player. Hustle them out on the field here. Still eight seconds on the play clock, so should get it off in time. As he gets into his guard position, we're ready to go. Ticks down, and it's gonna be either a timeout. Yep, they get the timeout. So Richfield takes their first timeout, and we will take this break on Fox 9 Plus. I think, you know, we have a really good thing going on here, and I'm just excited to be, you know, part of this journey with them. Denarius Smith blitzes, Goff, he'll hurl it up, Josh again, and he caught this one! Yes, he did! That I've been here to, you know, just create that culture, I think has been amazing, you know, that, that's one, uh, one of the big reasons why, you know, I wanted to be back and wanted to be a part of this for the long run. I just want to help lead the way, help lead the team, you know, I think it'd be a big part of just my, who I am as a person, you know, to be a cornerstone for this organization, you know, heading in the right direction. Welcome back to TCO Stadium. Richfield burns their first time out here in the first half. Would have been a delay a game penalty otherwise. Dash Samuels back to punt. Side Allen Berg deep for Hill Murray. Punting towards the near side. Diving for the ball, fumbled. Still loose on the field, who's gonna get it? Looks like Hill Murray got on top of it. Big break for the Pioneers. Berg tried to come up and catch it and the wind just knocked that one down. Looked like one of my wedges into the green. Fell short of the green, but Richfield not able to capitalize on the fumble. And Hill Murray's gonna have good field position at the 42 yard line of Richfield. So big break for Hill Murray. The wind will play havoc tonight with any balls up in the air heading left or right on your screen. It's about a 15 mile an hour steady breeze with some gusts. Just blew the papers out of our booth here. Man in motion, fake the handoff. Slant on the middle, wide open, connects. It's Berg for the touchdown. 42 yard strike from Jackson Reeves to Gavin Berg. And the Pioneers go on top 13-0. Perfect strike thrown by Jackson Reeves. Hit Berg on the slant, and he took it into the end zone. You can see the replay. Good play fake, and I'm sure they bit on it with Daniels and Gross chewing up yardage. Hit Berg with the strike, and he went into the end zone for the touchdown. So 42-yard touchdown. Dean Paul on to attempt the extra point. Again, player hustling in late on the kick set up, but they get him in in time. Plenty of time on the play clock still. Gavin Berg to hold. Dane Paul to attempt the extra point. Gets it down, kick is up, and the kick is good. 7.35 to go, first quarter of play. It's the Pioneers of Hill Murray 14, the Spartans of Richfield nothing. We're back with the kickoff after this on Fox 9 Plus. Welcome back to TCO Stadium. Pat Bear, glad you're joining us tonight on Fox 9 Plus. Prep spotlight game here at TCO. It's the Pioneers of Hillmary. They jump on top quickly. Took the opening kickoff. Fourth down conversion in midfield. Went in to score on an eight yard run by Alex Gross. Stopped Richfield on their first drive. Fumbled the punt, but got on top of it and recovered it. And first play after it, a strike from Jackson Reeves. Connected. 
with Gavin Berg, and it's a 14-0 win as Dane Paul's second kickoff goes out of the end zone. The left-footed kicker sends it deep again, and Richfield will start again from their 20-yard line. See if they can do more on this drive. So far, both sides of the ball, Hill-Murray lines dominating it. As they've been moving the ball at will offensively, came up with a couple of plays for losses against Malcolm Peterson and then smelled out the screen pass and shut that down also. So first and 10, Richfield. Dosh Samuels back in shotgun, slings it out to Peterson. That ball's gonna bounce out of bounds. We'll see if it's incomplete or if it was a lateral. It was close either way. See what, I think they're gonna call it incomplete. So second down and 10 coming up for Richfield. As they look to swing it out to Malcolm Peterson, any ball in the air tonight's gonna be an adventure with this breeze blowing in that one. Would have been the wind blowing cross field. Took it away from Peterson out of bounds. Second and 10 coming. Whistle on the field, we'll see what the whistle's about. Getting the ball set again at the 20, so second and 10. Clock running here with 7.30 to go in the first quarter and a 14-0 Pioneer lead. Dosh Samuels with the snap. Throws it out to the flats, complete. Out there to Xavier Hayes. Hayes running out of bounds near the first down. Good gain for Richfield on the play. Say so Richfield spreads the ball around. You can see the replay here. Ball slung out there. He sliced to the outside. 26 Trey Tremblay came up to make the play, but not before a gain of seven on the play. So third down and three coming for Richfield. And obviously a big play already here in the first quarter as they trail at 14 nothing. Dosh Samuels, quarterback drop the middle. Going to be close, but it looks like just short of the first down. Petrzewski in there on the tackle. They're going to mark it just short of the 30. So a fourth down coming. We'll see what the Richfield sideline decides to do. Dos Samuels is their punter as well as their quarterback. So he could do either out of this. Nobody deep to receive the punt for Hill Murray, although a 15 mile hour wind blowing right in his face. See if they run another quarterback run here as Dos Samuels came close to the first down. It's fourth and short. Man jumped offside, so big penalty there. Will give Richfield the first down. So the five yard gain will give, make it the. So Dakario Brown jumps off sides, gives Richfield the first and 10, just short of their 35 yard line. So first, first down of the game for the Spartans. And we'll see if they can capitalize on it in their second drive of the ball game here. Dosh Samuels takes the snap, wings it out to the side, off the hands of Musa Santa incomplete. Stepping up to guard him on the play, 27, Levi Grigson. Sophomore defensive back, brings up second down and 10. You can see that ball wobbling in the air and that isn't so much the quarterback throwing as the wind taking that thing and knocking it all over the place. So second and 10 coming for the Spartans. Ball marked just short of the 35. Glad you're joining us tonight. I'm sure it's a nice night at home on the couch or wherever you are watching a nice game as Dosh Samuels Fakes, fakes again, and he's gonna run it. He'll go up the middle for a short game. Met by three pioneers on the play. Like Petra Zuski in on the play, we'll see the replay here. He kind of fumbled the ball, was looking to throw it. Then he pulled it down and ran, and there was Petra Zuski there to make the tackle. So third down coming for the Spartans, Dosh Daniels, he'll fling down the middle, that one's knocked down incomplete. Bring up fourth down. Pass knocked down by Xavier Daniels. So a two way player, great running back for Hill Murray as well as a good linebacker. And he knocked that one down, bring up fourth down for Richfield. Ball marked at their 37. So Dosh Samuels back to punt. Back deep will be Simon Seidel and Gavin Berg, the seniors. Last time Bird came up, tried to catch it and fumbled it. We'll see if they just let this one go. I would think if it's short, they will. Because the wind is going to knock it down. Kick down the field and they're going to let this one go. I think it's a smart decision tonight. 
Ball's going to tumble and stop at the 33-yard line of Hill Murray, and that's where they're going to take over on their third drive of the ball game. They already lead at 14-0. Say both teams riding four-game winning streaks. Something's got to give tonight. And so far in the early going, it's been the Pioneers that took the opening kickoff and scored and then capitalized on one play after the last punt. See the Hill-Murray sign lines there. Looking at the play sheet, sending them in as Jackson Reeves goes under center. Xavier Daniels behind him. Head official comes in to hold up play. Now we're ready to go with 5.55 to go here in the first quarter. Pioneers shift both tight ends. Range up to the line. Petrzewski in the backfield, the lead for Daniels off the left side. Spartans get him this time. Gonna be about no gain on the play. Good play in by out Malcolm Peterson. A lot of these Richfield players going both ways. Peterson the best running back for Richfield. He comes up and makes a nice play. As he gets a hold of an ankle and he's not letting go of it. So no gain brings him second down and 10. Temperature in the high 40s at game time. I don't think the temperature is supposed to change much, but be nice if the wind died a little bit more. For the most part, the rain appears to not be raining quite as hard as it was at the start of the game time. Reeves back takes the snap. He fires to the outside. Great catch there by Berg. As he went up to get it, take it out of bounds. Gain out to the 47 yard line. That's gonna be another Hill Murray first down. Gain of 14 on the play. Reeves fired a bullet high, and Berg, nice catch coming down with it. So first and 10 coming. Trey Collins on the coverage there, but just a perfect strike, a little bit high, but great catch by Berg as he hauled it down. Already got a touchdown catch in this game, 42 yard strike on a slant from Reeves to Berg on the last possession. And this one gives him a first down and 10. Durain shifts left, Petrzewski upright. Daniels off a hole off the left side, good gain across midfield. He's gonna get it down to a 47 yard line. In on the tackle, number 59, that's Spencer Flannery, the sophomore. But again, good gain on first down. Gain of six will bring up second down and four as they cross into Spartan territory for the third time. Ball marked at the 47 yard line with 4.10 to go here in the first quarter. And the Pioneers on the move again. They can put up points, there's no doubt about it. Said so the last game I had, they had 56 at halftime. I'm sure Coach Reeves would be happy to see that again. Jackson Reeves takes the snap, fakes the handoff to Daniels. He'll roll left, trying to get away, and Malcolm Peterson has him. He just throws it out of bounds. They're going to call it incomplete. Outside the tackles, I think, makes it okay as he just flung that one away and... Out of the tackle box. So third down and four coming. Nice play fake, but Richfield got good penetration. The coverage was good. See the play again, made the fake to Daniels, but good penetration by Peterson off the side. Made him turn and spin, and he just flung it out of there. So that was a close to a grounding for sure. She was inside the hashes, but outside the tackle box, and that's all that matters. So third down and four coming. Richfield in need of a stop. Wouldn't surprise me if they don't get the first down, if they went for it again. They went for it on the first drive and capitalized and went in to score. Daniels on the run, big hole off the right side. He's got first down and more. So he rambles to the 30, inside the 30, down to the 29. Good run by the big running back. See that run again off the, went up the middle, good cut to the left as he broke loose and carried a couple of Spartans down inside the 30, tackled at the 29. Winfield was on top, I didn't see the number on the bottom, but by then he had well past the first down. So first and 10 Pioneers, 29 yard line of Richfield. They already are on top, 14 nothing, looking for more. Petrzewski in motion. Slung out to the right, catch there by Seidel. He cuts outside, good cut in the middle, and he's gonna go in to score. Simon Seidel took the swing pass, 29 yards, and the third touchdown already with 3.04 left here in the first quarter. 
and it's a 20-0 Pioneer lead. Pass right on the money, had good blocking in front of him, made the one good cut as he cut behind the block of Gavin Berg and waltzed into the end zone for the 29-yard touchdown pass. So Hilmarie connecting on all cylinders so far. Dane Paul in to attempt his third extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is good with 3.04 left in the first quarter. The score, Hilmarie 21, Richfield nothing. Back with more on Fox 9 Plus after this. We've waited for this for quite some time. Vikings football is back. Yeah! So do I. Welcome back to TCO Stadium. Pat Barrett, glad you're with us as the wind howls in my headset here. Steady wind out of the northeast at 15 miles an hour, and it's blowing right into our faces here, and so far it's been blowing right in the face of the Richfield Spartans. Third kickoff into the end zone by Dane Paul, and Richfield will start again at their 20-yard line, already down 21 to nothing. In this Skyway battle, cross-district battle between the Skyway Gold Hill Murray Pioneers and the Skyway Red Richfield Spartans. Spartans come in, number two in their district behind Patrick Henry, number two in their class and section, their 4-3A. They are four and two behind Minneapolis North, who's five and one. Hill Murray comes in tied in 3-4A with Chisago Lakes and Simile at 4-2. And, and they have gotten the jump so far. Took the first kickoff, went in and scored, and haven't looked back since they scored on their first three possessions so far as Richfield lines up for their third. Dosh Samuels takes the snap, hands off to Peterson off the left side. Not much happening there. 17, Xavier Daniels, first man to meet him. Had a help from a bundle of teammates. Looks like another loss there. Be a, make it a loss. Yep, they're going to mark it up to the 20. So no gain on the play. Second down and 10 coming up for the Spartans. They like to spread the ball around, but they are not in an advantageous position right now. I'm going to throw into this wind here in the first quarter. Now Sam is going to wing one down the field. Blow a wind blows that one all over the place as he intended it for Xavier Hayes. Over the top of him, incomplete. 26, Trey Tremblay on the coverage, brings up third down and 10. So they're just hoping this first quarter gets over soon. There's still 2.28 to go as they head into this 15 mile an hour win. And if they don't get this play for a first down, they'll have to punt again into this wind, which is just treacherous so far. Looking over to the sideline. Got three wide receivers left, one right, and third down and 10. Peterson in the backfield to the left of Dosh Samuels. Looks like Hill Murray here. They come on the blitz off the blind side. Throws it up, and again, that one's blown all over the place. Intended for Xavier Hayes again, but trying to throw into this wind is just not impossible, but near impossible. Anything farther than five or 10 yards, it gets up in that wind, and good luck. That ball fluttered way to the left of the intended receiver. I'm sure he was trying to play the wind. Have a blowback, but no luck on the play. So fourth down and 10 for the Spartans. Dosh Samuels back to punt. Seidel and Berg back to return. And again, unless it goes right to him, I can't imagine their coach told them anything, but let it go. So they're not gonna bounce far in this one. This one's way straight up in the air. Coming straight down the silo and now spins backwards. That ball's gonna be marked at the 30 yard line, 31. So 11 yard punt on the play, no return. Great field position for Hill Murray as they look to add to their 21 nothing lead. So glad you're joining us tonight here at TCO. A lot nicer I'm sure where you are than where we are. It's a beautiful complex and stadium, but it is a bitter night to play tonight. Look in the Hill Murray huddle there as Jackson Reeves gives his team the play call. 
2.13 left here in the first quarter. Great field position at the Spartan 31 yard line, first and 10. Daniel to his right, he fakes the handoff. Good rush put on and he's gonna go down. Nice play, Malcolm Peterson gets to him. Finished off by Spencer Lewis. So big blitz on the play. Loss of about nine. Looks like they'll mark it at the 39. So loss of eight on the play. Second down and 18 coming for Hill Murray. Nice defensive play. St. Peterson got to him first. Lewis finished him off. They almost had him the last time, but he was able to get away enough outside the tackle box to throw it away. This time, not so lucky. So second down 18 coming for Hill Murray. Double tight end set. Daniels to the left of Jackson Reeves. Seidel and Berg split wide. S hook up between Gavin Berg and Jackson Reeves. On the coverage, Dre Collins, but not before. They race 10 of the yards. Going to mark it at the 29-yard line. So third down and eight coming. Gain of 10 on the play. It's the fourth completed pass for 95 yards. So far for Jackson Reeves, eight rushes for 72 yards so far for Xavier Daniels. So both on the ground and in the air. They've been moving the ball well here in the first quarter with the wind at their back. Just 47 seconds left. The clock running down here in the first quarter. So we'll see how different it will be going the other direction. I was thinking about passing. I'd do it soon here for Coach Reeves. Handoff coming to Simon Seidel, going around the right side. He's got blockers ahead of him. Gets around the outside, knocked out of bounds, but he'll get the first down inside the 20-yard line. Had a host of pioneers in front of him. Good blocking, got around the corner, and got down to the 19-yard line where it'll be first and 10, Hill Murray. 30 seconds, and the clock stopped here in the first quarter. You can see Daniels out there with Petrozuski leading. Also had Berg on the block that broke him loose off the, around the corner. Gonna mark it at the 20, so first down and 10 for the Pioneers. 30 seconds left here in the first quarter. As they look to tack up one more score, hopefully for them. They lead it 21 nothing already here at TCO. Reeves with Daniels to his left. Durain shifts to the right side. Reeves will pass. Throws the slant, he's got him, it's Petrozuski. Tackled, ball fumbled, it'll go out of bounds. They called him down on the tackle, so no fumble. So it's gonna be marked at about the 15 yard line. So gain of five, clock running down. Be interesting to see if you'd call a timeout here so you have the wind at your back for one more play, but it isn't like Coach Reeves is going to do it. So time's going to run out here in the first quarter, one quarter in the books from TCO Stadium. The score after one, Hill Murray 21, Richfield nothing. Back with more on Fox 9 Plus after this. I think, you know, we have a really good thing going on here, and I'm just excited to be, you know, part of this journey with them. Zanaria Smith blitzes, Goff, he'll hurl it up, Josh again, and he caught this one! Yes, he did! That I've been here to, you know, just create that culture, I think has been amazing, you know, that, that's one, uh, one of the big reasons why, you know, I wanted to be back and wanted to be a part of this for the long run. I just want to help lead the way, help lead the team, you know, I think it'd be a big part of just my, who I am as a person, you know, to be a cornerstone for this organization, you know, heading in the right direction. Welcome back to TCO Stadium and Egan Prep Spotlight. A ball game tonight, Pat Barrett, so glad you're joining us. We've got some highlights coming your way. Jackson Reeves under center. Handoff up the middle, Alex Gross. He took it eight yards in for the touchdown to put the Pioneers on the board. Kick made it seven to nothing. And after that, there's Gross again on the run as he spun his way into the end zone for the eight yard score. They had a fourth down conversion that moved him into Richfield territory. Here comes the second one as a slant down the middle connected with Gavin Berg. For the 42 yard touchdown, we're back with live action here to start second quarter. Xavier Daniels up the middle as he runs into a pack of Spartans. 
Going to be maybe a gain of one on the play. It'd make it third down and four coming. So he ran into a pile up in the middle there, the big man Brody Johnson, the junior. In the center of that Richfield line. Not much happening on that play as he filled the hole nicely. So third down and four for Hill Murray going into the win, the second quarter of play. So we'll see if the play calls change at all for Coach Reeves. Jackson Reeves in the shotgun, takes it. Hits Gavin Burke, first down, tackled inside the 10. So first and goal coming for Hill Murray. Again, anything in that direction, five yards is a long pass tonight, especially throwing. That was right into the win. As he ran the hook in front of Dre Collins. Collins with the tackle, but not before the first down. First and goal coming at the six yard line and now mark it at the seven of Richfield. So they need a stand here, already trailing at 21 0 in their home game here at TCO. 11.05 to go in the first half. It's been all pioneers so far. This is their fourth drive. They scored touchdowns on the first three. We'll see if they can complete this one on first and goal from the seven. Jackson Reeves, he's in trouble. Scrambles out to the right, looking, looking. He'll just fire that one low. Knockdown incomplete, second down coming intended for Gavin Burke. Good coverage on the play by Dre Collins. He stuck with him step for step. And again, thrown into that win. The win really knocked that one down. So second and goal coming from the seven. Substitution coming in off the Richfield bench, number eight, Connor Overpiller. So Richfield looking to make a stand. The Pioneers, three touchdowns in their first three drives and they're looking for more. Jackson Reeves in the shotgun. Daniels to his right. Seidel split right, Berg split left. Tight ends shift. Second and goal. Handoff up the middle. Daniels met in the backfield. Good play there. Connor Overpiller gets into the backfield. Untouched. Might get a gain of one on the play, but it's going to bring up third down and goal. I think they'll mark it at the six yard line. You can see it came off the left side. Overpiller, good move. Got into that backfield quick. And you see Daniels working for every inch. He got it down to the five. So third and goal coming from the five. Be interesting to see what a field goal or an extra point would look like kicking into that win tonight in that direction. So we'll see how that affects the decision making here. They went for one fourth down already at midfield and got it. It's third down and goal right now from the five. Big shift, everyone shifting to the right side. Seidel and Berg come wide right. I backfield, fake to Daniels, rolls out right, he's in trouble, gets away, surrounded, throws an incomplete intended for Petrozuski. Gonna bring up fourth down and goal. F flag down on the play. I think they're gonna call a personal foul against Richfield. Five Spartans had him surrounded. I think they're gonna call a late hit on the play. So they talk it out here. We'll see what the call is. Big call, obviously, for Richfield. So it would bring up a fourth down. So first down, half the distance to the goal. The ball fell incomplete, but late hit on the quarterback. And a huge play. As Hill Murray will now have first and goal. Ball marked at about the two-yard line. So Richfield's gonna need a huge stand here, already trailing it by 21 with 9.49 left in the second quarter. Pat Barrett, Tim Barrett, my spotter, so glad you're joining us tonight on Fox 9 Plus. The Pioneers looking to strike again. Reeves under center, Daniels behind him. Both tight ends shift again. Here comes Petrzewski right. Daniels off the left side, stiff armed, and he'll go into the end zone for a touchdown. Xavier Daniels, first touchdown of the ball game, the fourth for the Pioneers, and they lead it 27-0. The big junior running back, 6'1", 225, put the right stiff arm out, knocked him to the ground, and rambled into the end zone for the touchdown. So a two-yard run, makes it a 27-0 lead. Dane Paul now to kick into the wind. Gavin Berg on the hold. Looks like Luke Grigson on the snap. 
Been perfect so far. Berg takes it, good snap, kick down, and the kick is up and good. 9.44 to go in the half from TCO, the score. Hill Murray, 28, Richfield, nothing. Back with more on Fox 9 Plus after this. City's Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. Pat Bear, welcome back to TCO Stadium in Egan. It's the Vikings prep spotlight game, and so far the spotlight has been on the pioneers of Hill Murray. Four possessions, four touchdowns, four good extra points. They lead it 28-0, and Dane Paul will kick off once again the junior for Hill Murray. This time kicking into the wind, his last three kicks with the wind all into the end zone. We'll see where this one gets to as he kicks it high. It's gonna fall short at about the 15, spins back, ball still loose, recovered by Hill Murray. And they're gonna get the break. Nice hustle on the play. John Petrzewski, the junior tight end, hustling down on the field and that's where the wind came into play. That ball kicked up in the wind. You'll see it spun all the way back about 10 yards away from the deep man. Henry Banda tried to get to it, but that ball spun back like a wedge on the green. Moved about 10 yards away from where it landed, and by that time, Petrzewski was able to get on top of it, and Hilmarie takes advantage of it. They'll go first and 10. The ball marked at the 16-yard line of Richfield. Whistle and a timeout call by Richfield. So we'll take this timeout here on Fox 9 Plus. Back with more after this. It means the world to me um, to be here in Minnesota and in this city of Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, it's, it's incredible. The fans are great. Um, you know, everywhere we go, it's uh, all smiles and, and, and pictures, and, and it's just incredible to be around these fans and, and the passion that they have for the, for the Minnesota Vikings, and I'm just excited that I'm a part of it. You can see the huddle of the Hill Murray Pioneers, everything going their way so far. Four touchdowns in their first four possessions. They recover the pooch kick that spun back to John Petrzewski. And they'll have the ball deep in Richfield territory marked at the 16 yard line. They'll start first and 10. Richfield taking their second time out here in the first half training. Get things together and see if they can come up with a stop here. Already trailing at 28 nothing. Jackson Reeves goes under center. Alex Gross now in the backfield. Backup running back. He had the first touchdown of the game, an eight yard run. In the first quarter is the tight end shift to the left. Pitch out to the left side. Alex Gross stumbles a little bit. He's got a big hole off that side. Cuts it outside and he goes in untouched for the touchdown. 16 yard ramble by Alex Gross. His second touchdown of the ball game. And a 34 nothing Hill Murray lead. Good blocking out in front of him. Watch the blockers get out there. Both tight ends get out, take people out of the play. Gross fouled his blocking perfectly. As you can see, Durange stepped off the one block, moved up, got the second one. Gavin Berg out in front with John Petrzewski and they opened a huge hole and he went in untouched. Dane Paul on to attempt his fifth extra point. Gavin Berg on the hold, the kick is up. And this one is drilled straight through with nine. 35 to go in the half. It's 35 0. Hill Murray over Richfield. Back with the kickoff after this. Two touchdowns and 10 seconds for the Pioneers here in the second quarter, and they have built a 35-0 lead. The visitors looking to go five and two on the season. Richfield on a four game winning streak, but they're gonna have to come up with something magical soon here. They've got the wind at their back now. 
for the last 9.35 of the half, but they already trail at 35 nothing. We'll watch this kickoff again from Dane Paul, the last one he spun it down perfectly over the top of the second line of returners. And by the time they could get to it, it was already John Petrzewski down there. Henry Banda back deep along with Dre Collins. That kick towards Banda. He's got this one on the run at the 13. Got a big hole. He breaks through 35. Out to about the 40 and finally tackled there. 26 Trey Tremblay got to him, but not before a good gain by Henry Banda and Richfield. will start with good field position. Ball marked at their own 39-yard line. So we'll see what the home team Spartans can do as Banda broke through the first line. Was met there by Vincent Cheney along with Trey Tremblay. So 39-yard line, first and 10 for Richfield. Jackson Dosh Samuels, the senior quarterback, back in the backfield with Malcolm Peterson, his senior running back next to him. He'll throw outside and throws wide. Derek Brown tried to stop, slipped a little bit on the field, and that one goes incomplete. So second down and 10 coming for Richfield. So second and 10 coming from the 39-yard line. Richfield trying to get something going positive in their favor. Dosh Samuels with it. He looks right, took it down, and he's tackled in the backfield. Number 80, Luke Grigson, the senior, got hands up, made him pull the ball down, and then fell on top of him for the sack. So loss of four on the play. Brings a third down and 14. He was looking to try and throw quickly, but good coverage up there on that side. Looked like Simon Seidel out there had the coverage. So three split out to the right for Richfield on third and long, and he's in big trouble, and Dosh will go down again. Dosh Samuels goes down. Xavier Daniels in there, helped out by John Petrzewski. It'll bring up fourth down for Richfield. Good rush on the play by Hill Murray. I say they've dominated both sides of the line. They sent the house that time, and there was nowhere for Dosh Samuels to go with the ball. He also is the punter, so he goes back to punt. Berg and Seidel deep. They do the returning on punts and kicks for Hill Murray. And they should get this one in fairly decent field position as he's punting from about his own 15. That one squibs off the side of his foot. It'll roll and tumble out of bounds in Richfield territory. He's gonna go out at about the 42 yard line. And that's where Hill Murray will start again in good field position. Already up 35, nothing in the ball game. So nothing going right so far for the Spartans tonight. And Hillbury will come out for their sixth possession. They've scored touchdowns on all five so far and have built a 35-0 lead. I'll start with it at the 42-yard line of Richfield. Say so one more game coming in the regular season for both teams, a home game next Wednesday with Como Park for Hill Murray. And Richfield will travel to Litchfield to take on the Dragons for their last game next Wednesday night. Reeves hands off to Daniels up the middle, steps through a big hole. He's into the backfield, one to stop him. He breaks away from that one. Going down and he'll step out of bounds at about the 11-yard line. The big running back hauling Spartans all over the field. And he finally stepped it out of bounds. Looks like they're going to mark it right at the 10-yard line. Here's the replay. Big hole, got out of the arm tackle, went through a couple there, trying to get him to the ground. Peterson couldn't get him, maybe he was trying to strip him too, but he'll step the ball out of bounds. First down and goal to go right at the 10 yard line for Hill Murray. 8.03, the clock stopped here in the second quarter and Hill Murray looking to tack on another quarter, another touchdown here in the second quarter. Had three in the first, already two here in the second inside of 10 seconds. Back-to-back -back offensive plays. Daniels bounced it outside. Got a flag down on the play. We'll see what the call is. Usually that means holding. Tackle on the play, Malcolm Peterson, number three. We'll see what the call is. It's in that area of holding typically, but we'll see what the call is made. Hill Murray coaches out on the field there. It's gonna go against the Pioneers. Looks like we've got a Hill Murray, or a Richfield player rather down. So why don't we take this break on Fox 9 Plus. We'll be back after this. Hey, that's all they got, 
see what y'all got, Minnesota. Everybody's so amped for this game. Yeah. Remember that? So do I. Welcome back to TCO Stadium. Richfield we'll player down on the field was grabbing in his knee, so never a good sign. We've got 7:56 to go here in the second quarter. Play Pat Barrett. Glad you're joining us on a cold, windy, rainy night here at TCO Stadium for our prep spotlight game. The Minnesota Vikings putting it on for us, presented by Twin Cities Orthopedics, and it has been all Hill Murray so far. This is their sixth possession of the game. They scored touchdowns in the first five, as you can see, the teammates of the Spartans. Down on a knee, hoping good thoughts for their teammate. Didn't see exactly what happened, but on the play, Hill Murray was called for holding the interior line, so it'll move the ball back for the Pioneers. Say so Hill Murray four and two on the season. They are tied for the top of uh, Section 3-4A with one more week coming on Wednesday of MEA next week against Como Park. They are tied with Shisango Lakes and Simley. They beat Simley early in the season, 14-7. Simley, Hill Murray, and Shisango Lakes all four and two in section 3-4-A as they take the player off the field and definitely looks like a knee injury. I think that's number eight, Connor Oberfriller, I believe. They're taking off the field a sophomore defensive back. So we hope he's okay. Might be an ankle. But either way, they take him off the field. Good thoughts for him. The ball moved back on the holding penalty. Moves it back to the 20 yard line. So first and goal coming from the 20. Hill Murray, the white and green uniforms on top 35 nothing. Jackson Reeves under center. Eye formation right now. Petrozuski in front of Daniels. Pitch will go left to Daniels. Good block there. Cuts inside. He's got space out there on the outside. He's going to cut it inside and he'll ramble over a Spartan for the touchdown. Xavier Daniels. Not to be denied, 20 yards and a touchdown for the Pioneers. And they tack on six more for a 41-0 lead. Watch the cut, good cutback, got the good block from Petrozuski, and then he put his head down and rambled over a Spartan for the touchdown. Good run by the junior running back. He has been running wild so far tonight. Gotta be near 100 yards. Had eight for 72 in the first quarter. And he has been pretty much unstoppable so far tonight as Hill Murray has been in the air and on the ground. Five runs for 57 yards from my top-notch spotter, Tim Barrett, here tonight in the second quarter. So we're talking about 100 and almost 30 yards in the ballgame so far as Dane Paul is on to attempt his sixth extra point. Kick is up, and that one is splits the uprights one more time. Six good for him. With 7.38 to go in the first half from TCO Stadium in Egan, the prep spotlight game score. The Hillmary Pioneers 42, the Richfield Spartans nothing. We're back with the kickoff after this on Fox 9 Plus. junior kicker for Hill Murray. He has had a good night kicking the ball. All six extra points have been good. Kicking with the wind, he drilled three into the end zone. His two into the wind. One, they had a good return by Henry Banda. The other one spun to a stop and they were able to get on top of it as he boots this one away deep towards Banda again. He'll take it at the 10, 15. Hesitates at the 20, cuts it back 25. Ankle tackle there by number nine. That's Chris Lopez, the junior linebacker. And it'll give Richfield the first and 10 starting at about their 28 yard line, I believe is where they're gonna mark it. 7.31 to go here in the first half of play in week seven, 2023 Minnesota High School League football season. 
Pat Barrett, glad you're joining us tonight. It's been all pioneers. They lead it 42 nothing. The red clad Spartans, first and 10. Dosh Samuels over the middle. Overshoots Henry Bend incomplete. Coming up second down and 10. Looking for him on the slant. Coverage on the play looked like Nathan Corey, but the ball fell incomplete. No, I was sorry, that was Levi Grigson on the coverage. Again, even with the wind, tricky to control where you're throwing it that far downfield as the wind's going crosswise from a, the other side of the field towards us here in the booth. Dosh Sam is going to run this one, gets around a block, gets to the outside, and he's knocked down at about the 30-yard line. Nice play over there defensively. As 27, Levi Grigson, the sophomore defensive back, steps up to make the play. We'll be talking to his dad, Ryan Grigson, the senior vice president of player personnel for the Vikings at halftime. So stay tuned for that. Was 7.02 in the clock running here. Beautiful tackle by Grigson as he set to put a shoulder right to him. Knocked Dosh Samuels to the ground. So third down coming, eight yards to go for Richfield, and they need a first down so badly. Something to slow the momentum of these Pioneers. Dosh Samuels fires high and over the top of 22, Derek Brown incomplete. So fourth down coming for Richfield. They say a team that likes to pass the ball around. Coming into the game night, 49% completion percentage. So they've thrown the ball well, 105 yards average. They've averaged 74 on the ground, but so far it has been all pioneers tonight. And starting in the first quarter into that win could not have been easy. So fourth down coming, Dosh Samuels back to punt. Berg and Seidel deep for the Pioneers. So he'll kick it from by his 20 yard line. He's got the wind at his back, especially if he kicks it towards our sideline here on the near side. Puts it up in the air, it tumbles end over end. They're gonna let it bounce, big kick off the turf. Berg decides to go nowhere near it. He mishandled the one earlier in the game as that one will tumble all the way down to the 27 yard line of Hill Murray and that's where they'll start first and 10. Their seventh drive of the ball game. They've been able to score in the first six. Their offense, it's been just about perfect tonight. Completed a fourth down on their first drive right near midfield and marched it in after that. And since then, it has been just the machine clicking, whether it's on the ground or in the air. They can do no wrong offensively so far in this first half. I say very reminiscent of the last game I had them when they played North St. Paul. They were up 56-6 at halftime. They're up 42-0 right now with still 6.28 to go in the half. Terrain shifts to the left side. Petrzewski in motion. He'll go left also, running back coming inside. Alex Gross comes off the right side. Nice tackle there. Number seven, Spencer Lewis, the junior, steps up, makes the tackle. Short gain on the play for Hill Murray. Gain of one makes it second down and nine. See him coming off, he fights off the block. Nice job. Gets a hand on him, gets those ankles and takes him down. Calf roping him right there. With 6.05 to go in the half, second down and nine coming for Hill Murray. Saw that one in Yellowstone a few weeks ago. Pioneers will take on Como Park on Wednesday. Richfield will take on the Dragons of Litchfield. So Richfield and Litchfield next Wednesday to wrap up the regular season. Oh, Gross is smacked in the backfield. Matt head on there, beautiful tackle on the play by number 50. That's junior Michael McKnight as he met him in the hole and took him down. Good tackle on the play. So third down, loss on the play. We'll move the ball back to the 26 yard line. Third and 11 coming for Hill Murray. We'll see what they do. Wind blowing in their face, already late at 42 nothing. Might dial up something short. They've been able to run outside a couple of times with some good blocks leading them. So. We'll see what Coach Reeves decides to do here. Third and long. Pitch goes left. Gross with the ball. Steps up in the gap. He's got the first down and more. Cuts back at midfield. Gets away. He'll get all the way down to the 40-yard line. Big run on the play again. Great blocking out in front of him. Made the great one cut. And that's all it took. You can see the replay here. 
Got the good lead block of Petrozuski in front of him. He got around the outside. And from then he was off to the races. Good job tracking him down there by Xavier Hayes. He's got a hand on him. Francisco Sanchez over to help, but not before they get into Richfield territory and a first down at the 40 yard line. 4.30 left in the half. The Pioneers looking for more. Reeves under center. Tight end shift left. Gross still in the backfield. They'll take the handoff up the middle. Stacked up there. Met first in the hole by Brody Johnson, Jr., defensive lineman. Short gain on the play, maybe one. They're going to mark it. Looks like no gain. So ball still at the 40-yard line. Still the side. No, he's a step up. So we'll give him one. Ball at the 39, second and nine coming for Hill Murray. They've still got all their timeouts if they want to use them here in the first half with 3.49, the clock counting down, but they've already got 42 on the board. Second and nine coming with Reeves under center. Gross deep in the backfield. Side Allen Berg split wide. The range will shift to right. Here comes Petrozuski this way, whistle. Either delay a game or timeout. We'll see what happened as the clock went down to zero. Delay a game on the offense. Five yard penalty. Delay a game. Spot. We'll move the ball back five second yards. Down. So second and 14 coming from the 44 of Richfield. Delay a game penalty on Hill Murray. Say the wind has not let up at all. The flag is flying straight out. And it is heading right in the direction of the Hill Murray huddle. They've connected on a couple of short passes in the flats. We'll see if they look for something like that. Split out wide to our side of Seidel. Berg split out left on the short side. Petrozuski comes in motion. Hand off up the middle to Gross. He cuts it back inside. He'll be brought down after a short gain. 23 and 65 met him there. Martez Winfield, Brody Johnson in the tackle. So the ball's going to be marked at the 42 yard line of Richfield. Third down and 12 coming for Hill Murray. Coach Reeves rotating his running backs. Gross getting all the time on this drive in the backfield as we go third and 12. Ball marked at the Richfield 42. Shotgun formation, Reeves with Gross to his left. Drops back to pass, fires over the middle. He's got him wide open, connects with DeRange, breaks away from one, cuts it back inside the 10. It's gonna be first down and goal, Hill Murray. That connection from Jackson Reeves to Jack DeRange, the junior tight end, caught it, spun away. And takes it down to the eight yard line where it'll be first and goal, Hill Murray. Beautiful pass. Connects with him. Pushed off, kept moving his feet and got that one all the way down. Ball marked at the eight yard line of Richfield, first and goal. So they've been connecting on all cylinders. In the last game I had them, they put up 56 in the first half. And they're on their way to pretty darn close to that here in this first half as they lead it 42-0 of a first and goal at the Richfield 8, both tight end shift. Reeves hands off to Gross, cuts it up the middle. He'll get one or two. Done a better job up the middle this second quarter. It's getting outside in the pass that have hurt them worse. Second and goal coming, ball looks like it's gonna be marked at the six, so gain a one on the play. 134, clock running. Second quarter of play here in the prep spotlight game for the Minnesota Vikings here at TCO Stadium, it's all Hill Murray so far. Interview with Ryan Grigson, senior vice president of player personnel with the Vikings coming up at halftime. Reeves pitched it out to Gross. Moves to the outside and he's gonna go in untouched for the touchdown, his third of the ball game. The senior running back, 5'9", 190, and again he goes in untouched for the touchdown. 
Nine carries, 64 yards, and three touchdowns, my spotter man tells me, as he goes in untouched again for the touchdown. So the six-yard run brings on Dane Paul for his seventh attempt at an extra point here in the first half. 111 still on the clock. That kick is no good. So low and right, so he finally misses one. But the score with 111 to go in the half is the Hill Murray Pioneers 48, the Richfield Spartans nothing. We'll take this break and back after this on Fox 9 Plus. is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. Welcome back to the Viking Prep Spotlight game here at TCO Stadium. Week seven in the Minnesota State High School League 2023 football season. Pat Barrett and Tim Barrett, glad you're joining us tonight with a 111 left in the half. It has been all Hill Murray pioneers. They love it when I come to do their games. It was 56-6 at half, their home game against North St. Paul. They are up 49-0 as Dane Paul kicks off again. Henry Bando will take the kick again near the 10-yard line, gets out to the 20, stumbles across the 27 after a tackle on the play. It's going to bring up a first and 10 for Richfield. 105 on the clock left here in the first half. Gavin Berg on the tackle. As Richfield looks to get something positive going, even if you don't get a score, get a couple of first downs. They've got the wind at their back. The last minute and a five of the half here. Hill Murray, seven possessions, seven touchdowns so far, and they lead it 48 nothing. Dosh Samuels in the backfield, blitz is on. He hands it off, Peterson bounces it outside. He'll cut back inside across the 30, gets down to about the 34 yard line. So nice first down gain in the play, give him six on the run. Make it second down and four for Richfield. So we tick inside a minute. You see the play again, he comes off the right side. Bounced off the blocker. Nice cut back inside of Petrozuski. Put his head down and fought for an extra yard or two. So second down and four, Richfield. Peterson will come this way, bounces off one tackler, but there's a whole lot of other ones waiting for him there. He'll maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. Bring up third down and four to go for the Spartans. 25 on the clock and it's running. They've got one timeout left. We'll see what they do here on third down. 15 seconds on the clock. Dosh Samuels takes it, fakes. Throws over the middle, he's got his man. Xavier Hayes across the 35, 30, 25, trying to break away, gets inside the 20, now to about the 18. But the time's gonna run out. So again, a positive gain on the play. Got it all the way down to the 18 yard line, but time ran out before they could call their last time out. And that's gonna do it for a first half play. Here's the replay on it. Nice fake, nice pass down the middle. Connects with Hayes. Tremblay runs him down with help from Simon Seidel. They try and rip the ball away, he spins away. Finally, Levi Grigson gets in on the tackle. They take him down at the 18, but that's going to do it for the first half of play here from TCO Stadium. The score at halftime. Hill Murray 48, Richfield nothing. Back with more after this on Fox 9 Plus. I'm super excited. Being a Minnesota Viking means the world to me. Um, to be here in Minnesota and in this city of Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, it's, it's incredible. The fans are great. Um, you know, everywhere we go, it's uh, all smiles and, and, and pictures, and, and it's just incredible to be around these fans and, and the passion that they have for the, for the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm just excited that I'm a part of it.
Welcome back to TCO Stadium in Egan. Pat Barrett, glad you're joining us on the Viking Prep Spotlight Game. All Hill Murray in the first half, they lead it 48 0. As the teams leave the field, we get ready to see the Richfield the dance team and their performance here at TCO tonight. Following that, we've got an interview scheduled with the Senior Vice President of Player Personnel, Ryan Grigson of the Minnesota Vikings. So that'll follow our dance team performance as we wait for them to get ready. They've got the blankets around them down on the sidelines down there. It is a cold, damp, windy night here on week seven. Welcome back to TCO Stadium in Egan. Pat Barrett with uh, Senior Vice President of Player Personnel, Ryan Grigson from the Minnesota Vikings. Tell me, what does your position do? Well, I pretty much uh, help oversee both pro and college scouting departments and kind of act as conduit to, you know, Quasi at FMS, our general manager. And we have a, a personnel group that's, you know, pretty, it's about five guys and we all kind of collaborate and hear from all the scouts on both sides, pro and college. and. You know, watch film and 
you know, help build the draft board. And, you know, we scout tons of players, both pro and college, but we have a process that we go through analytically and from watching the film and kind of piece it together and then, you know, present it to Quasi and then we hash through it and we try to find the best players. Had a chance to look at your resume, both as a player in the NFL and the CFL, as well as an executive and an employee in both. Tell me a little bit of the difference between CFL and NFL for you. Well, there's 12 players versus 11. You know, there's a 55-yard line. Right. There's 20-yard end zones and all those things. It's a big space. So I took an appreciation of it because of the athletes because you have that much space. And I think our game's kind of taking it on to a degree. So, you know, pass rushers up there are prevalent. Athleticism is really prevalent. Its size really isn't. So it did me a good, you know, service just to be able to scout in that league. One, I don't discriminate. So I see players that, you know, play in that league, and they come play in our league. A player broke our rookie tackle record when I was in Indy that came from the CFL. Um, so there's players in every league, including the Arena League. It's no longer there, but Kurt Warner I helped give me a ring when I was in St. Louis because you know, he came from the Arena League and did a great job and you know he's a Hall of Famer so they come from everywhere you just have to you know and they fall through the cracks too so it's an, it's an inexact science so you just try your hardest to beat the bushes and, and get as many as you can. Sure. How has Minnesota treated you the year plus you've been here I see you've got two sons down the field playing yeah. today. Yeah it's exciting uh, I stayed in that beautiful Vikings Omni I mean this this venue is is I don't think there's there can't be any better, I don't think. Uh, the, we stayed in the hotel for five months, like Quasi and I, coming from the Browns and until my family moved out here. And then we, the people of Minnesota have just been phenomenal. You know, we're Midwest people. My wife and I, she's from Michigan. I'm from Northwest Indiana. We're both Big Ten people. So it was, a, it was an easy transition in that respect. We've gotten more used to the, the weather, uh, the winters, but it's a, it's a great place. We've got great people here, great ownership, and... You know, I, I have no complaints. It's been a great place. Awesome. We're happy to have you here. We're so glad you joined us tonight. Thank you. Things are going well for your son so far today. Yeah. yeah. Best of luck the rest of the season with Hill Murray and with the Minnesota Vikings. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank it's you. It's Ryan Grigson, Senior Vice President of Player Personnel for the Minnesota Vikings here at TCO Stadium. We're back with the second half after this. He brought me quesadillas. He didn't bring no lamb chops. These guys love this. I know. Isn't it awesome? Flo's been huge. He's been great. The guys are so confident on that side. It's been hard to practice against, which I, which I always know is a really good thing because it's making us better, challenging us to think about things, and now we're finding out a lot of answers. Like we learn something new about our offense every day from playing against them. I roll the kids. They're great. You should see uh, all of them tonight, and then the baby's already. She turns nine months in, nine months. in wow. like two days. Can you imagine that? I, it felt like just yesterday we were in Washington. You were giving me that ball. I have that ball you gave me when she was born. It sits in her room, and they painted it up so it has her name on it. Special, special, special. How you been feeling? I feel like I haven't talked to you. When I see you talking to Ziggy, I'm like, you know what? That's about right, man. Were you picking your location, your ring of honor location? Isn't that UV ray protected? Or is it just swaggy? I got bad eyes, man. I should probably be like you and wear those glasses in meetings more often. Maybe that's why I couldn't play. Because we both know I sling it out here. You're doing a good job, man. Appreciate it. You are. Fire me up. Bang. Yep, good, good, good. Be ready to body people up in there. You can win on that route all day. They can't cover you. That was pretty damn good. Just try to throw them out when you get them like that. That was good. Nothing like coaching ball with a wire. I told you guys how much I just love wearing a, a microphone. Do you guys want to do this every day? A little back shoulder, huh? That was a good throw. All right, here we go. Let's do this. Keep it easy for the boys. Simple plays here. Simple plays. All right, execution, physicality, here we go. Great throw, Kurt. Oh, hit it. Ah, come on. Hey, one point for the defense. Nice job right there. Hey, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, bring it. 
Enjoy your day off. This has been a, a nice little four day stretch right here. I could not be happier with the competitiveness. Very proud of this group right now. First and foremost, always one of my personal and I know our entire team's favorite nights of the entire, not only training camp, but the whole year. To get to welcome all of you to a night practice in the stadium, bring in the energy that you guys did. Um, that was fun right there. These guys are working their tails off. We are off to a phenomenal start to training camp, and I cannot wait to see you on September 10th against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you. Love you. I think, you know, we have a really good thing going on here, and I'm just excited to be, you know, part of this journey with them. Denarius Smith blitzes, Goff, he'll hurl it up, Josh again, and he caught this one! Yes, he did! That I've been here to, you know, just create that culture, I think has been amazing, you know, that, that's one, uh, one of the big reasons why, you know, I wanted to be back and wanted to be a part of this for the long run. I just want to help lead the way, you know, help lead the team, you know, I think it'd be a big part of just my, who I am as a person, you know, to be a cornerstone for this organization, you know, heading in the right direction. Welcome back to TCO Stadium in Egan. Pat Barrett with Tim Barrett. We've got highlights of our first half of play, which was all Hill Murray in that first half. They had the wind at their back to start, and they took advantage. Alex Groves back up running back. Came into the game after they picked up a big fourth down and rambled in for an eight-yard touchdown. Reeves with a strike to Gavin Berg down the middle. Made it 14-0 with the extra point. Out to Simon Seidel on the outside. Good cutback behind Berg's block, and he scored to make it 21-0 in the first quarter. They took advantage of the wind at their back. Second quarter, more of the same. Xavier Daniel stiff arm into the end zone for the touchdown, made it 28-0. They recovered the onside kick, or not really an onside, more a pooch kick that John Petruszewski got down on. It spun backwards, like I said, a wedge. I'd love to hit him that way. It spun back about 10 yards. He got on top of it. First play after it, Alex Gross again went in for his second touchdown of the ball game. Extra point made it 35-0. Daniels off the beautiful block for Petrzewski, and he runs over the Spartans into the end zone. That made it 42-0, and one more time, Alex Gross untouched off the right side, his third touchdown of the game. They missed the extra point. But they lead it 48 0 in halftime here at TCO, looking for their fifth straight victory of the season. Richfield came in 4 and 2. They've got a four game winning streak also, but it's going to take something spectacular 
in this second half to change the way things are going. The Pioneers clicking. I said this is the second ball game I've had them this year. At home, they scored 56 in the first half and 48 tonight on the road. We're going to take this short break. We're back with the second half kickoff after this on Fox 9 Plus. Pat Baird back here, just a couple of minutes left as they stretch out here at halftime and we will have the second half of action here in our Viking Prep Spotlight game from TCO Stadium in Egan. What a beautiful facility here. Listen to Senior Vice President of Player Personnel, Ryan Grigson, talk a little bit about it and, and he said it and I've got to believe it. This practice facility is unmatched and it's so special the Vikings allow the high school teams to come in here and play. And although it's not going their way, I'm sure Richfield's enjoying the experience of having a game here as the red and white clad Spartans have come on the field and the Pioneers in their white uniforms trimmed in green and black follow them. And we'll have action here in about two minutes. Say one more ball game left on the schedule. Some of the teams here in week seven playing tomorrow. I know my hometown Fridley's game with North St. Paul was bumped back to tomorrow at one o'clock. Weather's supposed to be a little bit more cooperative tomorrow. Looks like for the most part the rain has quit here tonight, but it's still windy and damp and cold here at TCO. Uh, next week on Wednesday, last home game of the regular season for Hill Murray, they will host the Cougars of Como Park at seven o'clock. And the last road game of the year for Richfield on Wednesday night, they go out to Litchfield at seven o'clock. And then we will start section play on Tuesday the 24th of October, followed by the semifinals on Saturday the 28th. And most teams will play their section final on Friday, November 2nd before state tournament action starts on the 9th of November. Hill Murray tied for first right now in section 3-4A with Chisago Lakes and Simley. If they were able to win their section, they would play on the 9th of November at Eastview against the winner of section 1-4A. Richfield comes in in second in uh, section 4-3A action. North on top with a record of 5-1. and one. I'll see them as I do PA work at Fridley. They will take on the Polars to wrap up their regular season next Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. They'll take on the Polars. So Richfield hoping for a Fridley victory in that one. Say a loss tonight would drop Richfield to four and three, so they'd need some help to be able to get back to a tie. I'm not sure how they, all the tiebreakers go in that section, but right now North on top at five and one, Richfield four and two coming into action tonight. Holy Family, Brooklyn Center and St. Croix Lutheran at three and three, and then Breck and Concordia Academy are two and four, bringing up the bottom of four, three A. In three, four A, I said it was a tie between Chisago Lakes Hill Murray and Simley at four and two, and Hill Murray has the 14-7 victory over Simley earlier in the season. Como and Johnson tied at three and three going into action today. And then South St. Paul and North St. Paul tied at two and four at the bottom of three, four A. Both teams came into the game with a four game winning streak. Last week it was a 35-14 victory over the Packers of South St. Paul for Hill Murray. And it was a 53-30 victory over Edison for Richfield in their ball game to up their record of four and two coming into tonight. But tonight, it's been all Hill Murray. They had the wind at their back to start the ball game, took the kickoff, moved it out near midfield, big fourth down pickup, marched it in for the touchdown, added three more in the first quarter and tacked on four more. And they lead it 48 0 as we get ready for the second half of action here from TCO. All sorts of sports action going on as we head towards section play in all sports here in the state of Minnesota for the fall of 2023. Hill Murray will kick off to start the second half. It looks like they'll send out a new kicker, ninth grader Evan Curtis. Number 46 is going to kick off here 
chance to play. And I know in the first game I had Hill Murray, they led it 56-6 at half and Coach Reeves gave lots of his backups a chance to play a lot in that second half. The game got pretty close. It was a 63-54 final after a 56-6 lead at half. So we'll see what happens here tonight. But I'm sure both coaches would like to give lots of kids a chance to play on the Vikings practice facility tonight. As we get ready for the second half kickoff, Hill Murray in the white and green kicking off from right to left on your screen here in Fox 9 Plus. Glad you're joining us tonight for our action from TCO Stadium. And the second half kickoff is off and we're underway. Taken on the far side over there by Henry Banda. He tries to bring it across the right side and won't find much running room there. Tackled at about the 15 yard line. Bunch of pioneers track him down on the play. See 17 Xavier Daniels. He's been outstanding on both sides of the ball so far. He's in on the tackle and Richfield will start first and 10. Again, going into the wind, the wind blowing hard off the right to left, right in the face of the Spartans as they'll start at the 17 yard line, first down and 10 to go. Quarterback Jackson Dosh Samuels back, throws a little hook pattern there, just a little short and outside to Derek Brown. I say any pass going in that direction is hard to control. As that one waffled wide right, it'll be second down and 10 coming up for Richfield. Malcolm Peterson, senior running back to the left of senior quarterback Dosh Daniel Samuels. He throws out to Peterson. That one will get away. And Peterson will get on top and we'll see if they call it incomplete. They will, the signal is incomplete. It's a third down and 10 coming for Richfield. As they have not been able to get much going. They had a big play right at the end of the half as Dosh Samuels connected with Xavier Hayes for a big gain down inside the 20 yard line, but time ran out in the half. As you can see the replay on that one, that one was awfully close to a lateral, but they call it incomplete. Third down and 10 now for Richfield. Three to left, one split to the right. Our Samuels throws left and Hayes just can't hold on. Drops it incomplete, will bring up fourth down. So they ran a little pick play inside, had Hayes to the outside if he had just one man to beat, but just couldn't quite hold on. You see the pass again, and you can see the ball starting to waffle at the end of it. High, and Hayes trying to run maybe before he could make the catch. It'll bring up fourth down. Dosh Samuels also does the punting. He's back at his own five yard line. Side Allen Berg deep again for Hill Murray. I guess they're gonna let this one bounce. This one spins off to the right in the wind. It'll stop dead and spin backwards. Again, it's like a nice wedge shot kicking in the eastern direction tonight. The ball's gonna be marked at the 34 yard line of Richfield, a great field position coming up for the Hill Murray Pioneers. They send their first team back out on the field. Jackson Reeves, their quarterback, he has clicked on all cylinders tonight, connecting with receivers all over the field and the running of Gross and Daniels behind that big offensive line of Hill Murray. They have rambled, both of them picking a big yardage and both have scored touchdowns. 11.28 to go here in the third quarter. Jackson Reeves, the junior quarterback under center. Derange moves to the right. Petrzewski in the backfield in front of Daniels as he moves, stiff arms the runner, or a defender rather, and he takes that ball inside the 15 yard line. First down for Hill Murray. The junior running back has been the unstoppable force tonight. He and Alex Ross running behind that big line have had running lanes and they have taken advantage of it. You can see the stiff arm. It's the second one he's put on at least tonight. Uh, Sidestepped one and he moved the ball inside that 15 yard line. So first down and 10, they'll mark it at the 14 yard line of Richfield. See the Homer East sideline, they gotta be happy with what's going on so far tonight. We go underneath 11 minutes here in the third quarter. Running time in the state of Minnesota doesn't start till the start of the fourth quarter unless an agreement between both coaches. We'll see what happens here tonight. Again, a shift of the tight ends. Daniels takes it up the middle. Good stop there. Runs into a couple of Spartans. Malcolm Peterson in there with number 65, Brody Johnson. So they meet Daniels in the hole. 
Ball's still going to be marked at the 14, so no gain on the play. Brings up second and 10. Interior of the line has played much better for Richfield since the beginning of the second quarter, but all that's done is forced Hill Murray to go outside where they've connected on the pass and the run for touchdowns in that second quarter. Second and 10 here for the Pioneers. Daniel set way back in the backfield, both tight ends shift to the right. Hand off to Daniels, looks for a hole up the middle, slides right, he'll get a couple of yards. Down to about the 11 yard line. Gain of three will bring a third down and seven. Crack back block there. Tried to slide inside and again, Brody Johnson got to him first and hauled him down. Caught a gain of two, they move the ball to the 12 yard line. So a third down and eight coming for the Pioneers. Reeves looks over to the sideline. Coach Reeves checks his play call sheet on his wrist. Third and eight, they've got the wind at their back. So we'll see what they do here on third and long. Again, tight end shift to the right. Petrozusi sets up in front of Daniels. Daniels with the ball, run off the left. And again, Richfield, nice stand there. So they stand him up at about the 11 yard line. It's gonna bring up fourth down. Sending four out on the field, new players. We'll see what the call's gonna be here on fourth down and six yards to go. It's a nice defensive stand here by Richfield. So far looks like they're gonna set up for the extra point. The extra point, come on, field goal. So Gavin Berg's gonna hold. Evan Curtis is gonna attempt it. It's gonna be spotted at the 17, so 27 yard attempt coming for the freshman. Snaps good, holds down, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So 27-yard field goal on the play for freshman Evan Curtis. It makes it a 51-0 Hill Murray lead. With 8.19 to go here in the third quarter, we'll be back with the kickoff after this on Fox 9 Plus. We've waited for this for quite some time. Vikings football is So do I. So a small victory for Richfield as they make the stand, force Hill Murray to attempt a 27-yard field goal, and freshman Evan Curtis kicked it through. 51-0 lead for the Pioneers, and he will kick off. With 8.19 to go here in the third quarter as this kick goes down. Taken on the far side by... Banda, he tries to get to the right side, nothing happening there. His good pursuit, plugs the hole and they'll start again. Not very good field position inside their own 15 yard line. Last two kicks, he's tried to get all the way to the right side and find the wall, but Hill Murray able to get there and stop it before he could get to it. So you're gonna mark the ball right at the 15 yard line. That's where the Spartans will take over first down and 10 yards to go. I think it looks like a new quarterback in the game. Let's see if I can get a number here, but it gonna take off and run to the outside. And you're gonna step out of bounds. Looks like number 16, I think. That'd be Newt Lenny. So a nice run on the play by the senior quarterback. It's gonna be a nine yard gain. Bring up second down and one. Takes the snap, quarterback draw right up the middle. Uh, gonna be close to a first down. It's gonna gain one, so first down for Richfield. They've got it first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. So the senior quarterback has come in, a couple of nice runs, and they get a first down. 
It's going to sling it out this side, connects on that side with Henry Banda. He'll make the catch, but thrown for a loss. 26, Trey Tremblay in on the tackle. Helped on the play with number 28, Andrew Whistler. Through the quick pass to the outside, but good pursuit and coverage there by the Hill Murray defensive backfield. Also one on the play brings up second and 11. Going to send a couple of wide receivers. So you got trips to the left, one to the right. Running back at the backfield with Lenny. Was the quick out to this side. Caught there by number 22, junior Derek Brown. Taken down on the play by Levi Grigson. That gain's going to move the ball out to the 33 yard line of Richfield. So nice gain on the play. It's going to bring up a third down and two yards to go. So he tucked it away before Grigson could get to him. Third and two. Lenny again, another quick pass to Brown. Good. Tackle at about the 39. Should be enough for another first down. Again, Grigson in on the tackle, but not before back-to-back -back first downs for this Richfield offense. And again, they're trying the quick hitting passes thrown into that wind. You can't throw much farther than that without the wind playing havoc with the pass. So the connection gives them a first down at their own 39-yard line. Lenny under pressure, steps up in the pocket, gets away from the rush, has to cut back as they continue to track him down and finally do get him down at about the 37-yard line. 77, Carson Jewett came back after a leg injury early in the game, and he's played well in the middle of that line, both offensively and defensively. As you can see, they chase Lenny all around. Couldn't find anyone open, stepped up. Petrzewski and Whistler put the pressure on him. He cut back again, and by then, Jewett was waiting for him. So loss of one on the play brings up second down 11. Brown in motion first to the left, and now back to the right. Trips this side. And he's going to run it. He's going to run into the defensive back. 28, Andrew Whistler again. The senior gets to him. Going to throw him for a loss. Bring up third down and long for Richfield. Going to move the ball back to the 34-yard line. Bring up third down and 15. So we'll see what they draw up here. Up, oh, false start on Richfield. They'll send them back five more. Not what they need in this win for sure. So ball will move back snap. to the 29 yard start. line. False Number start nine, on the Spartans. The five yard penalty, third down. Not many penalties in the ball game so far. And that way, a pretty clean ball game. Lenny back to pass, fires it long. He's got a man wide open, right, hits him right in the number. Had Musa Santa behind both defensive backs, and he couldn't tuck it away. Hit off the pads, incomplete, brings up fourth down, and he feels bad about it. He was wide open behind the defensive backfield of Hill Murray as they talk it out back there. Brings up fourth down and 20. Jackson Dosh Samuels back on to punt. You can see he tried to catch that one against the pads and just bound it off incomplete. Side Ellenberg back deep for the Pioneers. So that punts away into the wind as it spins around. Gonna land across midfield. And it's gonna be touched down at the 42 yard line it looks like of Hill Murray. That's where they're gonna start first and 10 with 4.27 left in the third quarter to play and a 51-0 lead for the Pioneers. Looks like it was... I think, you know, we have a really good thing going on here and I'm just excited to be, you know, part of this journey with them. Stadium in Egan, Pat Barrett and Tim Barrett bringing you all the action tonight. 
between the Spartans of Richfield and the Pioneers of Hill Marine it has been all the white clad pioneers so far tonight. Reeves hands it off up the middle, Gross on the run. He'll get out near midfield. Five yard gain on the play will bring up second down and five. He and Daniels make a nice tandem for this running core of uh, Hill Murray. Both scored touchdowns in the first half and they're running behind a good line and good blocking tight ends and wide receivers. Both on the inside and outside, they have gotten great blocks that have sprung them loose. Right at midfield, second down and five for Hill Murray. I set up in the backfield, Gross is deep. He'll take the handoff straight up the middle. He's met in the hole. He'll get a couple maybe. Spencer Lewis was there. As well as number 50, Michael McKnight Jr. Gonna have to fix his shoulder pads, hit him with the pads and knocked him right out of his jersey. So a gain of two on the play brings up third down and three. Richfield 48 yard line. Clock stick down to 3.15 to go here in the third period of play. All Pioneers tonight. Scored 21 in the first quarter. Tacked on 27 more in the second quarter. Had a field goal in their only possession here in the third quarter. Durain shifts to the right. High backfield, Petrzewski leading Gross into the hole outside. He tries to cut back behind him, stiff arms one, and he'll get the first down. Nice job of running. They had hands on him, but he broke away. Moved across the 45 yard line all the way down to the 42 where it's gonna give Hilmery a first down and 10. Both third downs and fourth downs tonight. They have been very successful both through the air and on the ground. The last game I had, he played all backups in the second half. I think he's giving his first team a little bit more action here in the third quarter before we see subs in this one. He had a 56-6 lead in the last ball game at halftime and ended up being almost a one possession ball game, 163-54. Hand off up the middle of Gross and he's got a huge hole there. As he steps across the 30, another first down for the Pioneers. Getting a good push from that offensive lineup inside. They have done a great job tonight, opening some big holes, and you can see, you could drive a truck through that hole. So he took it down to the 28 yard line, first down and 10 coming for the Pioneers. Things looking good so far tonight. They'll go to five and two, barring something unbelievable. With one game left at home on Wednesday against Como Park, and then they'll start section play. With seven teams in their section, whatever team gets the number one seed will have the bye in the first Tuesday and not have to play until the Saturday. As Reeves hands it off to Gross again up the middle, he breaks through the first line, through the second line. Working on the third line as he gets inside the 10 yard line for a first down and goal coming for the Pioneers. That's a nice looking backup running back. And he has done a great job. He and Xavier Daniels trading off. The senior 5'9", 190 pound spark plug as he hauls them down inside the 10. They're gonna mark it at the eight yard line. First down and goal coming for Hill Murray. We tick down towards one minute to go here in the third period of play at TCO, the Viking Prep Spotlight game on Fox 9 Plus. We're glad you're with us. And if you're a Hill Murray fan, you're really glad you're with us as they have played extremely well again tonight. Be their fifth straight victory of the season. First and goal, Reeves in the shotgun, Gross behind him. He'll give the handoff, cut it back to the inside. He'll get inside the five to about the three. Met there by Spencer Lewis. Good gain on first down though. Where are they gonna mark it here? Look to both sideline, I think they'll put it down at the four, yep. So second and goal coming from the four yard line. See the Hill Murray sideline, giving some signals there, they're gonna let it run down. And they take a shot at it in the fourth quarter at the other end of the field, so. 
That'll do it. Three quarters in the books here at TCO Stadium in Egan. The score after three. The Hill Murray Pioneers the 51. The Richfield Spartans field. nothing. Back with more on Fox 9 Plus. City's Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. Welcome back to TCO Stadium. Pat Barrett, Tim Barrett, glad you're back with us here at TCO on a windy, cold, damp night, but it's a beautiful night in Hill Murray world for sure. They lead it 51 0. You can see highlights so far in the game. They stack up Xavier Daniels there. They haven't had much luck with him. 16 carries for 155 yards. Only score in that third quarter, a 27-yard field goal by Evan Curtis. See Richfield with some connections here. Catch there by Derek Brown. Got him a first down. Backup quarterback, Newt Linney. Connecting again with Brown there. This time he's going to run it around the outside, but stacked up there by the defensive backs of Hill Murray. Drops back one more time as he'll fling it down the field. Had Musa Santa wide open behind the defensive backfield, but couldn't hold on. Since then, it's been the Alex Gross show as he hauls players down inside the 10. And right now it's a second down and goal for Hill Murray. Gross sit in the backfield behind Jackson Reeves. Takes the snap, grows up the middle, breaks away from a couple. He's going to cut to the outside to the pylon. He'll score. Alex Gross, his fourth touchdown of the game for the senior, makes it 57 to nothing. Nice job running. A couple guys had him in the backfield. He broke away from both of them, cut it to the outside, and beat the last defender to the pylon. I say two guys had him there, broke away from the second one, couldn't get him out of bounds before he stepped inside the pylon. And a 57-0 lead for Hill Murray. Evan Curtis on to attempt the extra point. Gavin Berg still doing the holding on the extra points and field goals. He'll take the snap. It's good. Kick is up. And this one is good again. So 11.53 to go in the ball game from TCO. It's the Pioneers 58, the Spartans nothing. Back with the kickoff after this on Fox 9+. Plus. Being a Minnesota Viking it means the world to me. Um, to be here in Minnesota and in the city of Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, it's, it's incredible. The fans are great. Um, you know, everywhere we go, it's uh, all smiles and, and, and pictures, and, and it's just incredible to be around these fans and, and the passion that they have for the, for the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm just excited that I'm a part of it. Welcome back to TCO Stadium. Pat Barrett, glad you're with us. Uh, two running backs in the game for Hill Murray. Xavier Daniel, 16 carries, 155 yards unofficially, two TDs. Senior Alex Gross, 17 carries, 116 yards, four TDs. It hasn't just been the running game. They've connected in the passing game also. It's been all Hill Murray so far. And they lead it 58 to nothing. 11.53 to go, and we're into running time here at TCO. As Curtis kicks it off, Banda will take it at his 15, cut it back, and he's met there by three Pioneers. They take him down before he can get to the 20-yard line. So it should be running time. Clock is stopped, and I'm not sure why here, but it should be running time the rest of the ball game. It's got to get inside of 30 points in the fourth quarter. So they mark the ball right at the 30-yard line, or 20-yard line, rather, and that's where Richfield will start their offense. Coach over on the sideline talking to the skill players. Senior quarterback Newton Linney in the ball game in uh, replacing Dosh Samuels, trying to get him some time here in the Vikings practice field, I'm sure. 
He's done a nice job so far. Got a couple of first downs that last drive. He's going to run around the outside on this run. He'll cross the 25 and get out near the 30-yard line, so near the first down. Nice run on the play. Taken out of bounds there by 29, Aiden Kelly. We'll probably see some new players in the ballgame, so between Tim and I, we'll try and get the numbers down and get the names to you. A nice run by Lenny around the outside. So you're going to give him first down. Got the 10 yards. So first and 10, Richfield. They're on 30. Nice job on the play. Lenny will throw short there. Got his man across the 35. Goes down to one knee and makes the catch. The 37-yard line. 13, 13, Henry Banda, the senior, makes the grab. So nice gain on first down. Brings up a second and short from the 37-yard line. Made sure of that catch. Takes a snap again. He'll fire short. Got his man across the 40. Going to be enough for a first down. Nice catch there. Looks like number six, Xavier Hayes, the senior, makes the grab. So a couple of first downs for the Spartans. So they move the ball out near midfield. They're out to the 42-yard line already with 10.29, the clock running here in the fourth quarter. Fakes the handoff to Peterson. Again, the slant. This one's a catch, and he gets loose, and he's going to score. This time it is Musa Santa, number nine. He made sure of that grab. One nice move. Off to the races, and he's going to score. 58-yard touchdown connection, and the first touchdown of the night for the Spartans. Pass right on the money from Linney. Hit Santa. He made this sure of the catch. Nice spin move. And nobody in front of him after that. And he'll ramble in 58 yards from the score. Here's the replay. Pass fake right on the numbers. He made sure of that catch before he spun away. Nobody in front of him as he rambles in for the touchdown. Joaquin Jamison on to attempt the extra point. Lenny is going to hold. Try and tack one on here. Get something positive to remember from our night. A TCO high snap gets it down. The kick is up, and the kick is good. With 10-16 left on the clock, the score. Hill Murray 58, Richfield 7. We're going to... Oh. You can see the happiness on the sideline. Lenny and Santa high five in there. We will be back with the kickoff here on Fox 9 Plus right after this. We've waited for this for quite some time. Vikings football is back. Yeah! Hey, that's all they got gritty cam, bro. Let's see what y'all got, Minnesota. Everybody's still in. So the Spartans get on the scoreboard here at TCO Stadium in Egan. Pat Barrett and Tim Merritt, glad you're with us for all the action here tonight. Hill Murray has been clicking and clicking well. It's 58-7 Pioneers as they go back to receive the kickoff from Joaquin Jamison. They will pooch kick it down. Picked up there by Gavin Berg. Takes it across the 30, he'll cut to the outside. Spins over the 35 and taken down at the 37 yard line. Tackle on the play. Look like number 18, Tyler Morgan. So Hill Murray will start with the ball. Good field position out at the 36 yard line, maybe 37, we'll see where they mark it. 37 yard line, that's where they're gonna start in their own territory, first and 10. 10.07 on the clock. Richfield gets their first score of the night. Nice drive, led by senior quarterback Newt Linney, connecting with a number of different receivers and finally connected with Musa Senna and spun away for a 58-yard touchdown reception. Handoff coming this way. Looks like Seidel. Simon will be taken down near the 40-yard line. There's a gaggle of Spartans met him there. Give him a gain of three on the play. They're going to mark it at the 40-yard line. 
So first one in on the tackle looked like number 50, Michael McKnight. And he was helped out by number 26 on the play, Amari Brown. So second and seven coming for the Pioneers of Hill Murray. Gonna go to five and two on the season, their fifth straight victory after starting with two losses. No shame, they started against Becker. A powerhouse up in the northern suburbs, led by Dwight Lundeen, their longtime head coach. They just named the football field after. Pitch goes to Daniels. He'll go around the left side, cuts outside. Gets by a couple of Spartans, one to beat. Knocked out of bounds over there as he gets into Spartan territory inside the 40 down at about the 37 yard line. A big man can run. Been knocking bodies all over the place and along his path. You can see him taking it to the outside, makes a good cut away from Xavier Hayes there. Last man to meet him there was Musa Santa and knocked him out of bounds. But not before a huge gain down to the 35 yard line of Richfield. 8.35 and the clock is running down. Said Como Park at Hill Murray on Wednesday night. Richfield to Litchfield. On Wednesday, both games at seven o'clock. Reeves hands off up the middle to Daniels. Stutter steps, and he'll get down to about the 30-yard line on the carry. Looked like a gain of about five before he's taken down on the play. 26, Amari Brown in the middle of that mix-up. Looks like they'll mark it at the 31. So gain of four in the play brings with second and six. So coming into the night in 3-4-A, in the QRF rankings, Hill Murray was 13, tied in the section with Chisago Lakes and Simley all at four and two. Richfield also 13 in the 3A. They were a game behind North, who's five and one coming into the night's action. So depending on what happens with North, they might seal the number one seed as Daniels breaks to the outside, got a flag in the backfield. Look like holding as he goes across the 20 yard line. We'll see what the call is on the play, but it definitely came in the neighborhood of holding a couple flags down. And looks like everybody's kind of coming back this way, so I'm guessing it's gonna be holding as the head official points to where the spot is to start marking it off. Looks like from the 31, so holding there. Yep. On the offense, holding in Hill Murray, 10 yard penalty, he'll move back to the 41 the yard spot. line. Second down. So from the spot of the foul, It'll bring up a second down and 16 yards to go for the Pioneers. They're stopping the clock. I don't think they're supposed to under high school league rules, but maybe they're just trying to give more playing time here for everyone. But we tick down towards seven minutes to go on tonight's contest. So glad you joined us, hopefully on a nice warm couch in front of a fireplace with a hot chocolate going. If you're a Hill Murray fan, you love tonight's game as they have played extremely well on both ends of the ball. Daniels met in the backfield. Nice tackle there by the Spartans. Like seven down at the bottom with three. So Malcolm Peterson and Spencer Lewis, they've been in a lot of the action in these tackles. Held a no gain. So third down long coming up for Hill Murray. At the last contest I broadcast, they were up 50 at halftime and it got down to almost a one possession game tonight. The starters getting a little more playing time as they're getting ready for section action right around the corner. If they're able to get the number one seed with a victory on Wednesday, that would mean they get the bye on the next Tuesday, the start of section play around the state of Minnesota here in 2023 as Daniels makes a couple of nice cuts, breaks off one tackle. A couple of Spartans finally get him down at the 28 yard line where he'll bring a fourth down. Three and 13, Henry Banda. Malcolm Peterson in on the tackle. A lot of these Richfield players going on both sides of the ball. Makes for a long night, but they are continuing to battle. Forget the score. You wouldn't know the score watching them play. They're in there hitting and trying to make the plays. Daniel's just a horse to get down. So ball's marked at the 29. It'll bring up fourth down and four for Hill Murray. 5.18, clock running. 
as week seven is about to wrap up for both of these clubs. One more week to go on MEA Wednesday and then it's section football play. Tight ends both shift, fourth down. Hand off up the middle to Alex Gross. He's gonna get down near the 25, but I think probably short. We'll see where they mark the ball. They had him at about the 27 and continue to battle and spin. First down, Richfield, turnover on downs. And a stop on downs, so Richfield will take over first down and 10 from about their own 26 yard line. It's a nice stand there on fourth down. Now get the ball back. Scored on their last possession, a 58 yard connection between Newt Linney and Musa Santa. So first and 10, Spartans, their own 26. Lenny running around the right side. Peterson trying to get him a block, 44. Liam Sampson, freshman, got a hand on him. They'll take him down, but not before he gets across the 30. Mark the ball, looks like at the 32 yard line. Gain of six on the play. See the replay, Peterson out there in front, got the block, Samson broke away from it, got a hand on him, got some help over there. And finally they got him out of bounds. So second down for the Spartans. Linney running off the left side. He's got some space in front of him across the 40, he'll get out near midfield and go out of bounds just inside Hill Murray territory's hit there. Met by number 85, Minko Hoagie. Sophomore. So we'll see what we got going down in front of the Richfield bench. Let's see what the call, I think there's a flag down on the field. Something happened as the runner went out of bounds. So we'll wait for the call on the field with 4.07 to go. They talk it out. They're trying to figure out what happened on the sideline. Something happened after the play as the runner went out of bounds. Here's the call coming our way. The result of the play is a run out of bounds, first down. After the play, we have an unsportsmanlike conduct on the Richfield bench, number 19, taunting, 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. So, first down on the run, and then we've got a 15 yard penalty for taunting. So he got down to the 41 yard line. Let's see what's going on here. So went out of bounds. Something happened down there on the ground that led to taunting. So 15 yard penalty tacked onto Richfield after the nice gain on the run by Lenny. So it's gonna move the ball back into Spartan territory. They'll have a first down. And so it's gonna be first and 10, ball marked at the 44 yard line. So it's not tacked on after the first down. So they'll get a first and 10 from their 44. Lenny still in the shotgun. Santa in motion. He rolls right. He'll fire long down the middle of the field. He's got a man open in the connection to Xavier Hayes. He'll jog in for the touchdown. 56 yard touchdown strike from Lenny to Hayes. Makes it 58 to 13. So two big strikes here in the fourth quarter. First one, a 50 yard, eight yard touchdown pass to Santa. And that one's to Hayes of 56 yards for the touchdown. Extra point coming from Jamison. So trying to finish the game on a good note. Pass right on the fingertips of Hayes, made a nice grab and went into the end zone for the 56 yard touchdown. So we've got rain blowing straight sideways from right to left. See if it'll wash the ball over the goal post here for the extra point. Looks like a beautiful typhoon in the Philippines going on right now out there. Jameson's gonna kick, Lenny's gonna hold. 
Snaps right there, kick is down. And the kick is good. So 3.45 to go here in the ball game. And we've got a 58-14 score. Hill Murray on top of Richfield. We're gonna take this break. Back with more on Fox 9 Plus after this. I think, you know, we have a really good thing going on here. And I'm just excited to be, you know, part of this journey with them. Zedarius Smith blitzes. Goff, he'll hurl it up. Josh again. And he caught this one. Yes, he did. That I've been here to, you know, just create that culture, I think, has been amazing. You know, that, that's one, uh, one of the big reasons why, you know, I wanted to be back and wanted to be a part of this for the long run. I just want to help lead the way, help lead the team. You know, I think it would be a big part of uh, just my, who I am as a person, you know, to be a cornerstone for this organization, you know, heading in the right direction. Welcome back to TCO Stadium. Nice fourth quarter for backup quarterback Newt Linney. Seven runs for 49 yards, six for nine, throwing for 141 yards and two touchdowns. Connections to Santa and Hayes as Hill Murray will take it first down and 10. The visitors, they've had a great night tonight. Led it 48 nothing at half. They tacked on 10 more before Richfield has scored on their last two possessions. And the Pioneers will start with it at their own 35 yard line. Like some substitutions coming in the ball game. We'll see who Hill Murray has in. Try and give you some numbers if we have some substitutes here. Handoff coming up the middle. Got a run there, looks like number 21 on the run. Vincent Cheney, sophomore, will carry up the middle. So Cheney with a gain of about four yards, brings up second down and six. And both teams getting some substitutions in the ball game as we tick down towards three minutes to go here at TCO Stadium. We thank the Vikings for their Prep spotlight support here tonight. And a nice interview with Ryan Grigson, senior vice president of player personnel and father of two happy Hill Murray players here tonight. And a good night for the Pioneers on both sides of the ball. They've played wonderfully tonight as they win their fifth in a row. Looks like we've got a false start over here on the near side. It's gonna be a five yard penalty against Hill Murray. Proud of the snap. False start, number 85 of the offense. False start on the Pioneers. Makes it second spot. down. Second down. And six to go. Or five and a half, maybe. Please run the game clock. Oh, it's going to go back. So it's second down and 11. Moved it back to the 34-yard line. Looks like backup quarterback Bennett and Nicholson. They're running back in the backfield. We'll see who the quarterback is. I think it's Nicholson. Looks like he's calling the plays. Yep. Number seven, Bennett Nicholson, senior in their quarterbacking. Second down for the Pioneers. See, so barely got that handoff up. Gave it to Vincent Cheney right before the blast. So loss on the play back to the 31 yard line. As Richfield quickly into the backfield on that play. Hit Cheney almost before he got the ball. So third down, 14 coming. Ball spotted at the 31 yard line as we go under two minutes to go here. And at 65, Brody Johnson gets a break. They get some substitutions in the ball game for the Spartans. Nice chance for some kids to get some action on the Vikings practice field. And win or lose a special feeling getting out there on the field tonight. Third down coming for the Pioneers. Hand off up the middle, looks like Nicholson again. He's gonna come out near the 35 yard line and bring up fourth down. It's like 12 and 71 in on the bottom of that pile. Francisco Sanchez and Ambus Little Voice with the tackle. So we'll see what happens here on fourth down. Ball marked at the Hill Murray 35, a fourth and 10. 
So glad you joined us tonight for the Fox 9 Plus Prep Spotlight game. Lots of great sports action in the state of Minnesota as we wind down towards section time in all fall sports and winter sports right around the corner. Want to thank Clayton Johnson, our director tonight, replay man Mike Peterson, producer and graphics Malik Fode, along with Hill Brian Murray. Curtis and Kay, Hill our Curtis cameraman. Time out of the second half. Got a timeout by Hill Murray. So I'll get some substitutions on the field here with 45 seconds to go. Normally I have a camera behind the end zone, but the wind and the rain was blowing so bad, it made more sense to get it up here in the press box for more close-ups. So good decision. Nobody wanted to be out there as it has continued to rain sideways here tonight. The wind, a steady 15 miles an hour, and you can see the Vikings sign up there. It's been doing that all night long. So a miserable night, but a good night for the Elmery Pioneers. As they go to five and two, Richfield will drop to four and three. And I say regular season wraps up Wednesday night, home for Hill Murray against Como Park. And Richfield travels to Litchfield in the western suburbs to wrap up their regular season. Richfield will more than likely start playoff action on Tuesday the 24th. Good chance at a home game in that game. And Hill Murray, depending on what happens next week and happens to Chisago Lakes and Simile, may have a bye in the first round. Either way, they will play on the Saturday the 28th. As the punt is away, tumbling forward, and that one will spin down to about the 34-yard line, and that's where they will mark it dead. Look like punt on the play by Jack Derange. He's replacing Josh Garvey, their normal punter and linebacker, who is out with concussion protocol. So we hope he's going to be okay with section time right around the corner with 35 seconds to go here at TCO. I think we're going to have an interview after the game with the winning head coach tonight, Robert Reeves. Supposed to join us up here in the booth, so stay tuned for that as Richfield will have a first and 10 from their own 35 or 34 yard line. Looks like we got a substitute coming in the game. Gets in the ball game. I think we're ready to go here with 35 seconds left on the clock. When he takes a snap, handoff up the middle and he's met by a fleet of pioneers as they take him down. First one in on the action there, number nine, Chris Lopez. See if they can get one more playoff. Lenny getting his team set. Senior backup quarterback's done a nice job here in the fourth quarter. So he's run for 49 and thrown for another 141. Looks over to the sideline, clock kicking down. Under five seconds, we'll see if we have another play or not. I don't think we're gonna. So that's gonna do it. Here at TCO game. Stadium, Negan. Final score, the Pioneers of Hill Murray 58, the Spartans of Richfield 14. Say so Pioneers go to five and two on the season. Richfield goes to four and three. And both teams will wrap up regular season play next Wednesday night. Hill Murray at home, Richfield on the road. As you can see, both teams exchanging handshakes. Congratulations on a game. Hard played and well played by both teams. Hill Murray, just the better team tonight on both sides of the ball. Their line dominating, their offense clicking on all cylinders. Into the wind, with the wind, it did not matter for them tonight. A 21-0 lead in the first quarter. Tacked on 27 more by halftime. Added 10 more before Richfield scored two touchdowns and a 58-14 victory for the Pioneers. So, why don't we take this break on Fox 9 Plus and we're back with an interview of head coach Robert Reeves soon after here on Fox 9 Plus after this.
Twin Cities Orthopedics is ready to go with more doctors, specialty services, and convenient urgent care locations. Ready, set, TCO. I'm super excited. Being a Minnesota Viking means the world to me. Um, to be here in Minnesota and in the city of Minneapolis, St. Paul, you know, it's, it's incredible. The fans are great. Um, you know, everywhere we go, it's uh, all smiles and, and, and pictures, and, and it's just incredible to be around these fans and, and the passion that they have for the, for the Minnesota Vikings. And I'm just excited that I'm a part of it. We've waited for this for quite some time. Vikings football is back. Yeah! Yeah! Hey, that's how they got gritty cam, bro. Let's see what y'all got, Minnesota. Everybody's so in for this game. Okay. Welcome back to TCO Stadium in Egan. Pat Barrett, glad you joined us tonight. You can see the visitors, the Hill Murray Pioneers down celebrating in midfield. Big victory for them tonight. Scored uh, 21 in the first quarter, had the wind at their back, and they took advantage of it. Get a chance to see some highlights here. You can see it was not a lovely night here, but they made the most of it for sure. That's Alex Gross bouncing it outside and going into the corner of the end zone for a touchdown. That was his fourth of the night as he ran wild. Pass here to connection between Newt Linney and his uh, Musa Sane, his re receiver made the catch, made a nice spin away and went in for the touchdown, 58 yards. Finally got Richfield on the board. Again, there's Gross battling up the middle, him and Xavier Daniels ran wild tonight. He had 116 yards, Daniels had 155 going into the fourth quarter. That's Backup quarter at Newton Linney. Run out of bounds after a big first down gain. He had a nice fourth quarter for him. Seven runs for 49 yards as well as six for nine passing, 141 yards and two touchdowns. Here's the one to Xavier Hayes, connected down the middle. And it wasn't easy throwing either direction tonight, but certainly connected on that one with the wind. To Hayes, ran it in for the touchdown. And you can see Hill Murray down there on the field celebrating with their trophy here on Prep Spotlight Night at TCO. We thank the Vikings for having the high school teams playing here. It's a wonderful facility, and even on a lousy weather night, it was a great night for the Hill Murray Pioneers as they come away with the 58-14 victory. We've got head coach Robert Reeves supposed to join us here in a couple of minutes for a post-game interview, talk a little bit about what's coming up for them as they head towards sections. Five wins in a row for the Pioneers. And they are clicking right now. They want me to do all their games. So the last one I did 58, 56 points at halftime. They had 58 tonight for the ball game, led 48 nothing at half tonight. And they were dominant on both sides of the ball. So why don't we take a short break here and we'll be back with head coach Robert Reeves of Hill Murray. The final score tonight, Hill Murray 58, Richfield 14. Back with more on Fox 9 Plus after this. Hey! 
Nice Jack. Hey, they're coming hot. Coming hot. No. Oh my gosh. Golly. Jeez Louise. Can we get in here, please? Thank you. Good gosh. Oh man. Oh. Use my nice little scrunchies. Put my hair up. I said I'm hot. Good movement. Nice! Nice! Lean on me when you're not strong. Fireball. How does this work? Oh, we got video? Wow. I've got to be top 90 smartest on the team. Goes my hero. Back up a jacked up tailgate. I know for sure. Hey, Kurt, does Brittany see us? Some people are going to listen to this and probably be like, off the cuff. This guy's trying to, like, be a weirdo. And in reality, it's probably just because a I'm a weirdo. A weird guy. That's 100% the truth. you got to be uh, your own unique person. And that's what I've noticed throughout this life. And, you know. I'm living the dream, as they say. Most people got to buy tickets. I get to be front stage. Welcome back to TCO Stadium in Egan. Pat Barrett with head coach Rob Reeves of Hill Murray. Coach, tell me about the victory tonight. Uh, was, you know, tough game. We knew coming in they, they've got a big football team size-wise. And we just want to come out and play physical and, and try to go downhill offensively on them and, and then get the ball to the edge a little bit and let our guys go. So, and then defensively, I think we came out with a lot of fire and we just week by week keep getting better and keep getting healthier and defense is playing good. I've had a chance to watch you play a couple times now. You've got five wins in a row heading towards section play. What are you looking to kind of put the fin finishing touches on four sections? Well, we, you know, we're a team where we started the season out 0-2 and, and and played some good football teams, Becker, St. Agnes. Um, we weren't very healthy then. We've gotten guys back as this thing's gone. So, you know, we're, our goal is 1-0 and each week. That's what we're looking to do is just each week, focus on each week, and then hopefully get to the section and it's a tough section you know right now Simley, Chisago, South St. Paul there's some good teams in that section so we got to stay healthy and we got to keep getting better each week. Well for a rotten night of weather it had to be one you enjoyed pretty much you probably won't have another night like this it's this rotten where you <laughs> it turns out so good. Yeah you never know in Minnesota with the weather right it'll be 80 and sunny next week but um, you know we just want to thank the Vikings and and uh, Ryan Grigson and, and Joe Rush, those guys put on a great show. And for having us tonight, um, this is an amazing event, you know. And I, I told Joe afterwards before I came up, I said if they got any openings next year, we'll, we'll take an invite. We'll come back. I talked to Ryan at halftime, and he, there's no lie, this is as nice a practice facility as there is in the country. I'm certain. So. Absolutely, and you know, I, it's 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 a awesome, could be a great college, you know, D2 one AA stadium. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, just just the setup altogether, but uh, this is a great.